Well, everyone, thank you for joining us. And once again, I'm sorry for the delay. I was having a computer that rebooted on me and, and took forever to um, um, go through the process of getting me back online. So um, we are here for the um, town manager search forum. And it's an opportunity for you to tell us what you would like to um, have, um, the qualities that you'd like to see in our next um, town manager. And so with us tonight is my colleague, um, Steve DeCourcy and Bernie Lynch and is with is our consultant. So we're going to turn it over to Bernie now. Great. Well, thank you. And I, uh, I certainly uh, I can certainly understand the technical issues. It, it always seems to happen at the worst possible time that yeah. computers do what they do. So uh, I, I'm glad we, we got that resolved and happy to be here tonight with with everyone. Uh, so, uh, Len, thank you. Thank you for uh, for the introduction. Uh, you know, as, as was pointed out, our, our goal here tonight is to hear from the residents and uh, other stakeholders uh, that may be in attendance. Uh, on the qualities that you think we should be looking for as we conduct the search for a new Arlington Town Manager and what the issues are facing uh, the Town of Arlington. Um, I, I thought just by, by way of introduction, I'd talk a little bit about uh, who Community Paradigm is uh, so that you have some, hopefully, <laughs> some level of confidence in uh, the the, uh, the work that we are, are going to be doing, uh, we have been doing and are going to be doing on behalf of the town of Arlington uh, to get you the pos best possible town manager uh, out there uh, for the town. Um, you know, Arlington is certainly a great community. Uh, it really is a leader in so many different ways. Uh, so it's very uh, you know, gratifying the opportunity to, to work with you and to um, be here tonight to, to talk about what the residents are looking for uh, in the next town manager. Um, community Paradigm was formed roughly eight years ago, uh, coming up almost on nine uh, by me. Um, I was, uh, my background is in municipal government. I was a town manager of Chelmsford for about 20 years and the city manager of Lowell for uh, almost eight years. And when I uh, made the decision to uh, leave my position as city manager, uh, I wanted to keep my hand in municipal government. Municipal government, I think, is really the the place where the you know the, the rubber really hits the road in terms of delivery of services to 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 people uh, that uh, depend upon government for uh, such essential services that uh, uh, you know and really make an impact on people's lives. So I wanted to stay involved, and we we created this um, organization, this firm of made up of a variety of uh, associates that uh, work uh, have worked or will, with municipal government or in municipal government. Um, and uh, one of the areas that was of particularly significance to us was the fact that so many communities were uh, going through a process of finding new town managers. Uh, there's been a generational shift that's happened in municipalities across the Commonwealth and across the country. Uh, here in Massachusetts, uh, roughly two thirds of the communities have turned over, changed their town managers over the last five or six years. Uh, mostly generational uh, retirements and then the resulting churn that happens as one position becomes vacant, another one, um, someone moves into that and another one, uh, another position becomes uh, available. And uh, it's really led to a very competitive market in the municipal management world, as you can expect. Uh, on top of that, certainly over the last couple of years uh, with the great resignation that we've seen that sort of came out of the pandemic, we've seen a whole host of other uh, vacancies that have occurred as people have uh, made the decision to leave the municipal uh, workforce. So we now have conducted over 90 or approximately 90 searches for town managers and town administrators uh, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts over the last uh, nine, uh, probably actually more like seven years. We didn't get right into this right away. And, um, you know, so we, we've been very active with the most active municipal um, executive search firm uh, in the Commonwealth. Uh, and so we're very happy to be part of the Arlington search right. because Arlington mm -hmm. was one, has always been one of the leaders in the world of um, professional municipal government. And we're, uh, we're thrilled to be here tonight to uh, continue on uh, in helping a community uh, find its next uh, chief administrative officer. Um, our goal tonight is basically to hear from you um, because we think it's it's been a tenet of ours uh, since we started this 
uh, several years back to offer up or to recognize the importance of community and citizen engagement in the process. And we always offer this to communities. And uh, some communities make the decision to move forward without citizen input. Uh, but when we raised this to the board uh, in Arlington, uh, it was a very quick determination that you know people wanted to hear from what the citizens are looking for, what the citizens believe, uh, the residents believe are the issues facing the town. So uh, our goal here tonight is really to, um, one, look to the future, not the past. Uh, what we are looking for is from you is an understanding of what you are looking for from the next town manager, what you believe the uh, issues and challenges are that are out there that we should be looking for when we look for a town manager for you. Uh, what are the, uh, you know, what are the, the top priorities, the, the issues that really drive the town of Arlington to uh, make it a better place to live and to work. Uh, and then, uh, you know, what are the skills uh, and attributes that the next town manager should possess? Uh, what's important to you to see in that town manager? And sort of combining those two of the issues and the skills, what are the opportunities? What makes Arlington an attractive place? When we're, when we're promoting uh, people to look at Arlington as a place to come and work and to become the town manager. What are the opportunities that you see? What are the skills that they could bring to the table? What are the uh, challenges that they could address that would give them the opportunity to make a community uh, an even better place to live and to work uh, and to participate? So um, with all of that said, um, I'm going to open it up. Uh, I think the, the idea here, Len, as I recall, is for me to Sort of work with the uh, citizens and residents in attendance uh, and uh, get a sense of what you're thinking. So I'm going to open it up and uh, hopefully we'll have some people that, uh, that participate in this process tonight and um, give me your thoughts. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions about the municipal management marketplace, uh, the process, uh, anything that can help you uh, in uh, help you in helping us. Uh, determine what's best for the town of Arlington. Yes, um, just of course, um, Ernie. And first of all, I'll, I'll just ask my own colleague, uh, Steve, if he wants to say anything. Oh, th thank, thank you, Len. Now, I, I just would like to thank everybody who is participating this evening. And, and as Bernie said, it's important for us to hear from the public. Uh, we did put out a survey on the town's website, and some of you may have already filled that out. That's going to be open until November 15th. But uh, for this evening, we'd like to hear from you and and, uh, and and get your thoughts on what you'd like to see in our next town manager. So so thank you again. Thank you. So so yes. Yeah, so, so if you could just raise your hand electronically, it helps to track the order in which you want to speak. You know, and just calling you or or um, or Bernie, if you want, you can do the calling. Well, I think I think we have a, a one right off. Is uh, Phil Goff? Yeah, hi, thanks, Bernie and Len and Steve. Phil Goff, 94 Grafton Street. And just um, you know, before I get into what I think is really needed uh, in Arlington with the new town manager, Bernie, if you could just tell us a little bit more about your approach to the search process. I know you've been involved, as you mentioned, and, and as I've heard, in the search for uh, town managers from other communities, and more, most recently, I think, in Watertown. Um, he scored one with um, George Paracas, this really great guy, because uh, yeah. I'm in the planning world, so I sort of know of him. Um, mm -hmm. So what are the things that other communities like Watertown and others you've worked on, um, what sort of the direction they've given you to sort of inform your approach for looking for a town manager? And uh, I know you want to take input from uh, us here tonight and from the select board and others, but what are those factors that are already uh, kind of baked into your process and approach? Well, I think um, it's a great question. I, I, I think that um, if I, you know, you, you sort of described our process a little bit there is that what we've done is we've come in already and spoken to uh, members of the board. Uh, we have the survey that's out there on the street. Uh, at this point, I think we have 116 uh, responses, and we're hoping to get that up 
uh, a little bit more by the 15th. Uh, and we've been speaking to some of the department heads and um, uh, you know, we conducted a survey of the department heads, a questionnaire to, to get their thoughts. Um, you know, we've been digging into the information that's available to us to, um, and, then, and then culminating really in, in tonight's meeting to grab as much information as we can to understand Arlington. You know, we walk into a community um, really with a, um, we try to set aside any preconceived notions that we might have about the community. Um, again, I've been in the business a long time. So I walk into almost every community in the Commonwealth with a, sort of a perspective that uh, I have some sense of what the community is all about. So I try, but I try to set that aside uh, and gather the information that we can to understand what's important to the stakeholders of the community. And that would be the department heads, the board, uh, the public, uh, and, and the information we have. And we pull that all together and we generate a position statement, position profile that, uh, you know, as I often say to every community, if we stopped right there, I think there's value uh, because it's it's allowed the community to step back and think about what's important and what are we looking for from this uh, the individual that's going to be filling this position. But we create that position statement that then is used uh, in two different ways. One, it's used to market the position, uh, and um, uh, it's used as a tool for us, for a screening committee, uh, and for the board to assess assess the candidates that come forward. Um, and we then move through the process of uh, you know, narrowing the search down, the pool down to uh, those individuals that most closely uh, track to the ideal candidate. Uh, we conduct the interviews of those people. We bring finalists, the screening committee will bring finalists to the board uh, and the board will conduct their own interviews uh, and make decisions based upon uh, who would be the best, most, the best fit uh, for that community. Now, what we think is important as we go through this process is to cast as wide a net as possible. Uh, and so, you, I appreciate you bringing up the town of, or excuse me, the city of Watertown, uh, because I think that's a great example of, uh, you know, sort of reaching out to the network of people that we have. Uh, and spreading the word uh, far and wide uh, to identify potential candidates. Uh, in the case of uh, George Parakis, uh, I knew George and I was able to you know, be in contact with him and, and talk about the position, but we really went uh, out there and used whatever means we could to build the strongest possible pool of candidates. As I said, it's a very competitive market right now. Uh, to find managers. There, there are some communities that uh, really struggle. And you'd be surprised at some of the communities that really struggle to get candidates. Uh, much of it's driven by geography, uh, but there are other um, aspects of it as well with regards to uh, the, um, the political uh, and governmental culture the, of the community. Um, I, I, I don't think Arlington has a problem in that area, but there are communities that do. Uh, there are um, uh, you know, issues that may trouble some candidates. Uh, again, I don't think Arlington is in that position, uh, but, you know, so, but we try to get out there and get as wide a pool as we can so that we have a diverse and qualified pool of candidates to bring forward to the, to the town. So I hope I answered that with the question, with the question that you have, uh, Phil, but, um, you know, our job here is to, uh, really assemble as much as information as we can about the town uh, and then uh, cast that wide net, spread the word um, and help uh, bring those candidates forward for the town to consider. And is your, if I just quick follow up, Bernie, is your network and those that you spread the word to, is that sort of out of state as well? Are we kind of talking about potential all New England search or nationwide, yeah. like where is yeah. it at? Great question. Um, it's actually nationwide. <clears throat> we utilize the, um, you know, the network that we've, I guess there's two different ways I'll, I'll respond to that. One is, um, you know, the, the postings that we do uh, include the International City and County Management Association. Uh, it also includes the uh, Women Leading Government uh, Organization, 
generally uh, that we that we reach out to. Uh, the um, you know there are other organizations that represent uh, underrepresented groups uh, and people that we think should be brought into the mix. Again, these are national organizations that we reach out to. But beyond that, you know that, that that's that's a pretty simple process. You don't, very frankly, you don't need us to to do that. Uh, I mean, we bring a, a variety of um, you know, hopefully skills and uh, perspective to the to the job of uh, looking at candidates and um, sort of managing through the process. But beyond that, we've developed a network over the last uh, seven or eight years with the recruitments that we've done that's nationwide uh, that we can bring candidates in from, from all over uh, because people have identified us as uh, pretty much a go-to organization here in the Commonwealth uh, that they can, uh, if they're interested in working in municipal government in Massachusetts, Community Paradigm is a place to, to go. We have a, you know, for example, our website uh, gets about four to 5,000 hits a month of different candidates. Uh, you know, we're on the phone talking to people from around the country, uh, looking at uh, coming to Massachusetts and have interest in being in the New England area uh, that we speak to. Uh, you know, so we, we, we do do it from a nationwide perspective. Um, the reality is, however, all, with all that said, the reality is that geography does play a role. Uh, it plays a role in what communities uh, are looking for, and it plays a role in what candidates are looking for. There aren't many people necessarily that are going to be looking to move from where they are to uh, Massachusetts um, for a variety of reasons. Um, and there are communities that are hesitant to look outside of uh, the Massachusetts marketplace because of concern that uh, you know, there may not be the awareness or understanding of town meeting form of government and board of selectmen, select board form of government. So all of that plays into um, sort of creating the right match. But we have, we've brought people in from, uh, you know, we have someone right now in Massachusetts that we brought in from Colorado. We brought uh, people in from, from Texas for, for, that have looked at positions, uh, comes immediately to mind. Um, you know, some people from uh, Connecticut. Um, I'm trying to go through all our clients uh, up top of my head here, but we, we do have people from around the country that uh, we speak with. Okay. Another question that people may have. And you know, it isn't just questions. It's a, I should state that. If you really, you didn't, I, I hope you didn't come here to listen to me. If you did, uh, I'm happy to speak, but I really want to hear from uh, from you and what you think we should know about Arlington. Elizabeth. Actually, I think I saw Lynette's hand up first. I mean, so. Oh, I'm sorry. No problem. Lynette, sorry. No problem. <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah, I want to thank you for this opportunity. Although there's also a part of me that feels like um, this should always be um, there should always be this kind of um, resident input into major decisions like this. Um, I would like to see a hiring committee that includes some residents, um, particularly residents that represent some of the less engaged communities in town. Um, one of the issues we face is um, that there are uh, communities of people in Arlington who don't feel heard and feel pushed to the edges and have a hard time um, coming forward and um, expressing themselves. I do feel like we've moved a lot forward, um, but I, I am definitely um, someone who would be interested in uh, reaching beyond the traditionally qualified candidate for town manager to looking maybe for people that have community organizing experience, nonprofit um, management experience, um, experience working alongside people rather than over people in a hierarchical position. 
Um, I would love to see uh, somebody who is experienced at helping different groups of people within a community um, come together and communicate. There's tension between community members in town and our police department. I would love to see an effort put into improving that relationship and a more openness in our police department to dealing with some of the cultural problems they have. Um, and uh, yeah, just generally um, someone who is approachable and who is willing to think outside the box. I think that, um, you know, we have systems in place that we get very wedded to, but I would love mm -hmm. to have us be able to um, think more outside the box and include more diverse um, ideas and opinions about how to move forward. Okay, great. Very helpful. Thank you. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. Um, I want to thank you for this opportunity. And I second, you know, I agree with Lynette. I also have concerns about, you know, the people who are here are the people who are always here. If we look at these names and we're not reaching, right, the people who perhaps we really need to hear from. So I hope that this isn't the end of your community engagement. I would hope that you would go to the senior center and do a listening session and go to where the, these communities are versus having people come to you. Um, so as also, as Lynette alluded to, there has been, I think the town fractured a couple of years ago. Um, I think it's been a really hard time for the town. Um, and uh, I would love to see somebody who is um, open to working with, uh, to, I feel like there's capital T town organizations and there's lower T town organizations, right? So there's a lot of nonprofits, a lot of volunteer groups um, who are not officially a part of the town organization, but do incredible things Ar like mm -hmm. Arlington Eats. Um, I'm part of a group called Arlington Fights Racism. Um, so I would love to have a town manager who sees those people and groups as partners mm -hmm. versus um, and reaches out to them and incorporates them into town events um, versus seeing them as other, right? And not um, reaching out to them, um, maybe seeing them as competition. I, I don't really know, I'm not part of it. <laughs> I'm, mm -hmm. I'm the other, so I don't really know. Um, I also, oh shoot. Um, agree that we need to have somebody who is willing to take a fresh look at public safety, um, the town's relationship with our public safety officers, um, and be realistic. We've, we've got problems, and they're not going to go away by not talking about them, um, mm -hmm. so let's talk about them. Let's someone, we need some courage. We need someone who's going to be brave and have the hard conversations. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I certainly uh, it's, it's interesting to 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 hear your your thoughts on that regarding um, the, the partnerships that are out there with the organizations. Yeah, uh, sort of if I could sort of tie into my own experience that, you know, that was a key part. Uh, if you know the uh, the city of Lowell and the history it has uh, in um, moving forward as a as a community of diversity and um, the partnerships have been developed with neighborhood and nonprofit organizations, be it the um, Urban Teen Equality uh, Coalition or the uh, the Cambodian Mutual Assistance Corporate uh, Organization, or the uh, uh, you know the uh, Coalition for a Better Acre, which is a uh, neighborhood development organization. Uh, they really are looked at it, certainly during my time as manager there. They were looked at as, as really partners throughout the um in terms of improving the community and i think that if you look at uh city managers town managers in general uh there's been a shift over the last number of years to become more focused on that level of community engagement and working in partnership with uh different organizations 
that um, as opposed to the more traditional, um, you know, stay in the back room, just working on your spreadsheets type of approach. So that uh, that type of uh, perspective, I think, is is where where uh, municipal management has gone and is heading. Yeah, if I could just, uh, you know, Arlington is a is a community that's run a lot by volunteers. It was a huge volunteer, yes. which is yep. an incredible wealth and, and a gift. Um, but it's also a very closed group of volunteers. It's not a, it's not a system that's open for everybody. It's a, it's a who knows. Not, no, I'm not going to, that's not, I'm, you know, I'm making a blanket statement. There are differences, but it's a who knows who situation. Yeah. And I think that needs to be broken. And I think that the new town manager needs to be open to having public forums and hearing from people and not hiding. Yep. Thanks. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Kristen. <laughs> Hi, um, I my name is Kristen Anderson. I'm a town meeting member in Precinct 11, and I run a business um, in Arlington Heights. And um, I'm here tonight to ask you to find a town manager who has experience bringing commercial real estate tenants and commercial development opportunities to our beautiful town. Mm -hmm. Arlington has lost much of its commercial development opportunities over the decades. This has had an impact um, on the town's budget. If you look at the municipalities with, with which we share a border who do not have budget problems, I'm thinking Cambridge and Somerville, you'll see that those municipalities have a well-balanced ratio of commercial real estate to residential taxes. They do not have to repeatedly raise taxes on their residents. Raising taxes is problematic for low-income folks and for folks on fixed incomes. So more commercial development not only provides residents with local jobs, it increases income diversity. And it is respectful of elders, many of whom have lived in Arlington for decades. Um, and as someone who loves being able to live and work in the same town, I understand the value of being able to walk or ride my bike to work. Commuting is a terrible waste of personal time and our personal time is important. Quality of life improves for folks who are able to walk to their jobs. Um, so I share a lot of concerns that uh, folks have mentioned here this evening, uh, but I wanted to um, specifically ask for this. Okay. Thanks for the opportunity. To Thank you. The, you know, and I, we've certainly heard that we're aware of the uh, the, um, um, the 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 sort of the dominance of the uh, residential uh, values uh, creating the tax base of, of the town of Arlington and um, and the challenges re with regards to commercial um, uh, development. So, thank you for that. Thanks. Other uh, people weighing in. What should we know about Arlington uh, in terms of uh, if we're if we're trying? Oh, okay, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Lynch. Uh, Steve Revelak, one eleven Sunnyside Avenue. Um, I'll try to kind of answer the questions that you sort of set out for us and just uh, sort of string it together. Um, a few of the characteristics that I appreciated in Mr. Chapdelaine, I felt he was a good communicator. He was diplomatic and quite politically savvy. Um, you know, he was for, in a lot of ways, he was, he was pretty good. He scored well as a people person. Um, I also felt he was progressive, uh, especially in the areas of, um, you know, making town buildings more energy efficient and modernizing processes within the town. I also appreciated that he uh, took a regional view on a lot of things. He was involved in the Metro Mayor's Coalition with the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Um, you know, the important point there being that some issues are, you know, better solved through collaboration with other municipalities. You can't just do them by yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I think that's another area where uh, Mr. Chapdelaine did well. In terms of challenges, I think a lot of it for Arlington comes down to 
um, land use and transportation. Um, you know, having been a community that was built out in the 20th century, we made a lot of the you know, same mistakes that other <laughs> uh, communities in the 20th century made. Uh, you know, we're not the sprawliest, but um, we do have some of that. And with the need to, you know, move away from fossil fuels, global warming and that sort of thing, uh, these are all kind of big problems that we're going to have to uh, address and we'll probably need some municipal leadership to address them. That is all, that is what I have. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. I may come back for uh, with the question I was about to ask for more, but I'd like to hear anybody else here that um, Mona. Mona. Hi, um, Mona Hi. Mandel. Um, the, uh, pre think nine town meeting member and 14 Water Street, Arlington. First of all, thank you so much for providing this forum and um, really appreciate select board members and the committee to engage the community um, for more feedback and uh, would also echo what Lynette was saying, would be curious to hear if there is a hiring committee that um, is also formed for this purpose. Um, I wanted to just, um, I, I heard what you said, um, and so uh, these are just some things I felt would be to try to um, let you know what I feel would be some important things for the town manager. So first one okay. is the top priorities for town manager. I feel that the pro we have a projected budget deficit that's coming up. So I think someone who that is something that will be pretty high up there. Um, another top initiative would be Arlington Public School Systems and to support equity initiatives there. Mm -hmm. The third priority uh, would be affordable housing. Okay. Um, fourth priority, it, it's not in any order as such. These are right. just some priorities as yep. such. Uh, yep. Fourth would be diversity, equity, and inclusion and being collaborative nature. Um, um, the fifth one would be to support um, uh, small business initiatives in Arlington. Uh, so it broadens the tax base to, as to what Kristen also mentioned. Right. And last but not least is climate justice and climate emergency. Um, okay. okay, great. Yeah, and, and, and you know it's 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 interesting. All of it, much much if not all of this is echoing what we've been hearing uh, as we as we've been in the town talking to people and from the survey. So this is uh, this is very helpful to to hear this. So um, thank you. What what skills and attributes do you think are important for the uh, for the next manager? These are the issues, but maybe maybe you were about to go into. You know, that I project. I wanted to. My second point would be challenges. I think you wanted to talk to yep. challenges. So I'll talk about that. My humble opinion, of course. And the third yep. I'll talk about is skills. And fourth is opportunities. Um, right. I think those are how you laid out and I was trying to take yes. notes as, as you spoke earlier. No. Um, I'm sorry. No. Um, so, so in terms of challenges, I would say Arlington has um, is political. And there's a very there's strong civic involvement from various groups. And so I think it's very important for the town manager to be perceived as well as actionate as being open to all viewpoints rather than just focusing on protecting the, the town interests only. Um, and, and, and that's where creative solutions can come out where you work collaboratively with various groups. So I, I think that I see that as a challenge as well as an opportunity. Mm. Um, the second thing would be um, the budget deficit. I, I think for the town manager, uh, there are so many competing priorities. I think I, it, that will be something uh, we do want the town manager to think of because it has impacts about overrides which also impacts property taxes for people who may not be 
able to afford it, uh, who are on fixed income or maybe uh, having issues with paying higher uh, property taxes, even though we support all the work, j just to have that into consideration as well. Yeah. Um, be able to work with budget deficits in creative manner. Mm -hmm. um, the third thing I wanted to mention was the skills that you that I feel would be good. I think one strong one would be community building um, experience, working with groups who have varying uh, opinions and perspectives, um, being very collaborative and being open to working with different groups. Um, strong experience in governance and accountability um, and being talented, open to creative solutions. Mm -hmm. um, last but not least, um, progressive and okay. making processes more efficient for the town um, and its residents. Um, okay. In terms of opportunities, Arlington is a leader in many areas. And I think um, I, I don't have to go into that. I think uh, you see that in, in, in so many things that have been highlighted, I'm sure, when you talk to um, uh, different residents in town. But I do want to speak about some areas that I feel also need um, some help. And I think that's an opportunity for this new manager to work on to develop. Um, I think this was already mentioned, um, outreach to various groups, um, building relations with all groups, including um, seniors, including people of color, including people who live in our affordable housing community, um, as well as building trust with police relations with the town. So thank you so much. That's all I had and I would love to hear from others. Thank you very much. Thank you. There's a lot there that, uh, that I've written down. So thank you very much. Um, I'm going to go to uh, Lynette or ask the Lynette uh, speak. And then we'll come, we'll come back to you, Phil. Go ahead, Lynette. Yeah, I just wanted to add one more thing to my list. Um, oh, I, think okay. that, I think that um, it's really important to um, have leadership that is transparent. Um, and, you know, mistakes have been made by our town leadership to have the humility to admit, oops, we made a mistake. Here's how we're going to, you know, to be open. And, you know, we all have egos, but the, the, the people who are in the highest positions have the hardest time um, owning there, you know, maybe minor mistakes, but I think that it's a great model and that we learn from our mistakes and mistakes are an opportunity to move forward. And if we don't own them, we can't grow from them and we can't learn from them. We've, we've had, uh, in my opinion, mistakes made by our leadership, especially in terms of the police department and the relationship with the police department. And, and, and I would love to see that shift so there's a greater um transparency you know mm -hmm. here's here's what happened and here's what we did wrong and here's how we're going to fix it okay great thank you uh <clears throat> phil uh, I'll, I'll go to you because i said i was going to go to you next but we have a couple other people who've jumped in that uh, yep. haven't spoken yet but go ahead phil i won't be too too long um i think all your comments <laughs> are really terrific and I do especially want to uh, second what Steve had said about Adam, and I'm sure Bernie, you already know a little bit about our previous town manager and some of the characteristics yep. that made him what I think many people consider a pretty successful town manager. So the more I think you know about Adam, and I think he was kind of the perfect guy for the job at the time. I think finding someone who <laughs> reflects uh, some of those qualities that Steve had talked about better than, and I don't need to repeat him too much, the communication, the, political savvy that, you know, he, he also lived in Arlington, or at least for most of the time that he was here. And I think that that matters to some degree. And I'm sure that isn't a requirement. Like I know it is in city of Boston to live in the city that if you work. For right. um, but I think that that, you know, says a lot about Adam and, and potentially a future um, town manager. The one um, kind of 
comment or opinion I want to say here too that I think to keep in mind, and I'd love to see in our next town manager. I think Adam had this characteristic to some degree, but you know, I would have kind of wanted it perhaps even more so is to really recognize uh, the power of, of Mass Ave in our town and its critical mm -hmm. importance. It's really kind of a it's a powerful like organizing armature. You know, you said you wanted to learn about Arlington. The way I see right. it is as a planner, it's an organizing armature of the town that's really more so than you see in just about any other town or small city that I know of where it provides, um, you know, the link, it connects like all of our grocery stores, all of our business districts, our high school and our middle school, and probably one, um, one of the elementary schools, um, you know, library, the town hall, kind of, you know, culture, art, but it, but it could be more. And I think that, you know, a town manager with, you know, who sort of comes to Arlington and really sees sort of diagrammatically how important Mass Ave is to the town and the transit, I forgot to mention transit, of course, is key and mm -hmm. understands that Mass Ave is, is decent, it's good, but it could be so much better. I think we've, you know, we've, improve things in bits and pieces. Um, we've tried to make parts of it and, and parts of it are indeed a complete street, a livable street that are that is accessible for all modes of transportation, for all ages, for all abilities, but it isn't quite there. There are gaps in that pedestrian network and that bicycle network. Transit could be a little bit better. There are opportunities, redevelopment uh, in the business districts. I'd love to see more of that, there you know, are some sites where we probably could have some more density for both businesses and residences. And um, you know, I think, again, seeing Mass Ave as having that real potential to become something even more than it already is, I'd love to see um, that in the, in the town manager in the future. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, uh, and I, I've, I've certainly spent some time on Mass Ave there in Arlington, so I, Somewhat familiar with. I won't. Again, I never claim to know be the the expert in all this, but it is a, a very uh, crucial corridor, certainly for the town. So, you know, great. Thank you, uh, Robin. Hi. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'm also a town meeting member from Precinct 12, um, and I want to second a lot of the comments that were made, especially by Lynette and Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. um and i also think that we need to do more for small businesses but i also want to see more done for artists in town i am an artist full-time full-time working artist i know that artists in the region have had a really tough time there's almost no studio space left anywhere in metro boston and surrounding areas and i say that as an artist too um has had to go further out, I'm, but I've been in West Concord for like 27 years and I'm getting squeezed out of my space eventually too. Um, yeah. Just with real estate prices the way they are, there's almost nothing affordable if there's anything at all. And mm -hmm. I would also suggest that you reach out to the arts community for input as well. I'd like to see that. Um, okay. I'd love to see diverse candidates for the position. And um, I, I love the idea of reaching out to non-traditional sources to find candidates. I love the idea of community organizers or um, nonprofits or, you know, just other avenues for finding people who are good at, at running things, who have great executive function and uh, multitasking skills and who are savvy about various things um i had a question about how do you usually reach out to people mm -hmm. <laughs> excuse me uh well you, you know again we we focus um you know largely on the network of people that we have and and we depend too on uh people like yourself if you, there's people that you think that would be particularly uh interesting to us <clears throat> we we utilize the um Again, the the sources or the uh, resources of the posting uh, organizations that we that we that sort of focus in on municipal government, uh, and it's always interesting to hear looking for, uh, of with communities looking for people outside of the box, and we certainly 
uh, have seen that um, uh, in some cases. Uh, most communities do tend to focus in on um, uh, people with municipal backgrounds or people that are familiar with municipal government. Uh, and very frankly, most people who are interested in these positions have made a lifetime commitment to the value of municipal government uh, and therefore, um, you know, the, the, that's sort of the, the people that are out there looking. Um, there have been mm -hmm. some, certainly some success stories of, of people that have come out of different sectors uh, and tried to work in municipal government. Um, but there are others that uh, have not been as successful, um, you know, and have made the decision to get out of it. So um, it, it is a challenge. You know, it's Massachusetts in particular is uh, very unique in terms of its governmental structures, uh, its, uh, its laws, its regulations. Uh, and there's, you know, we have, I don't know how many communities we've gone into that people say, you know, get, get us someone from the private sector, get us someone from the nonprofit sector. And uh, once people get into the municipal world, uh, from those sectors, it uh, it is doesn't necessarily always work out as well as one would hope and would like. Uh, but certainly, we're we're open to um, the possibility that there may be some people out there they're coming out of those. You know, I certainly uh, can appreciate what you've what you've spoken of regarding the the artists uh, community, the creative economy. Uh, you know, the value that they bring to a community uh, on so many levels. Um, and uh, you know, certainly we uh, we'd be interested in hearing uh, from from those people if they uh, would like to weigh in on this process. Well, I hope you'll reach out to the artist community also directly. Yeah, is there is there an organization in uh, in Arlington of uh, community? Uh, yeah, artists. Yeah, great, great. It, it, yeah. Okay. Well, we, we can certainly try to uh, to reach out and uh, grab some information and input from them as we uh, as we go through this process. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Rajiv. Hi there. Um, thank you to everyone for providing this opportunity for us to be able to um, voice our opinions and uh, thoughts about this uh, very important step. Um, I am part of the Arlington Human Rights Commission, so I just wanted to state that, but uh, I do not speak for the commission. Uh, I speak uh, on my personal behalf today. Um, I just want to echo a lot what has already been said, so I won't repeat it all, but just wanted to quickly go through all of the other people talking about the importance of diversity, making sure that uh, the person who is hired is focused on affordable housing, uh, listening to people who are not heard, people who, who belong to minority communities. Being on the commission, we often hear from people who are at the most vulnerable, uh, who are facing issues, who have been um, um, sort of um, targeted for their minority status. So I really hope that the new town manager, whoever it is, uh, works to you know be proactive about solving these issues. A lot of these issues occur and we sort of uh, have a reactive approach and we are trying to fix things or patch things. But if we are, we are more proactive about it, addressing upfront as to why this is happening, why do we have, you know, swastikas in the schools and, um, you know, um, Black Lives Matter signs being stolen or vandalized. And um, we've, we've had a whole spate of these issues. So I really feel that the town manager needs to come in and has to kind of um, address some of these issues, make the people those who are vulnerable feel uh, or that they belong to this community. Um, I mean, the one of the easiest way to kind of illustrate how people don't feel heard is if you see the voting patterns, some of the more diverse precincts always have the lowest uh, voter turnout. It's just because I, I don't think they, they feel heard. So they don't feel like they want they uh, they want to vote or uh, you know have a say in who who gets to represent people in town. Um, there is a lot of incredible work being done by a lot of uh, town bodies and committees, but the the representation or the people who are uh, part of these committees it belongs to always you know 
white uh, um, upper class or uh, you know higher income um, uh, demographics. I would uh, encourage the new town manager to develop a process to be able to recruit people who are diverse, who have different opinions, who are from all, all spheres of Arlington and ensure how, um, you know, because what happens is uh, the majority, even on those towns, bodies and committees, people who volunteer their efforts, the majority of the work is done by a very few. We have to be able to create a process where uh, you have to make sure that everybody has an effective voice and uh, um, making sure that all those views are represented. Um, I, I also echo somebody else who talked about uh, the importance of Mass Ave. Uh, we want to make sure that the, uh, every time I'm on Mass Ave, I always hear from people about uh, feeling unsafe if they're biking or they're walking on crosswalks. You have to develop a mechanism where um, people feel safe uh, to be able to access all the wonderful businesses that we have on this great uh, corridor of Mass Ave. Um, and uh, I think, uh, yeah, that's that's all I have. Oh, the one final thing is that um, being part of the EHRC, I also view, uh, we partner with other towns about a lot of diverse events that are held. But Arlington mm -hmm. doesn't seem to have to do uh, 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 seem to have a lot of those happening in our town. Um, you know things like Indigenous Peoples Day and so on. Um, a lot of the other towns are making a huge effort to involve their minority communities. It would be great if we could do something like that. Something like not on the maybe or not on the scale of the town day, but something you know to be able to um, celebrate uh, all those communities. I mean, I moved to this town about 15 years ago. I had no idea what was going on in town when I first moved here. Only when I made an effort to engage myself, do I realize that there are so many towns and bodies and committees. It would be great if uh, Arlington developed a mechanism where anybody who moved to, to town has a way of uh, no, you know, uh, feeling known that uh, there's all these opportunities for them to volunteer and engage. Um, so it would be great if the town or the town manager develops a process to do that. Okay, great. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for taking your time to listen to us today. No, great. Thank you. Um, Barbara. Hi. Thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to come and talk to you. I'm going to try and keep it short and make maybe three points. Uh, but the first point is I come from a probably in this uh, relatively unique position in this that I was raised by a city manager. I oh. was the child of a city manager, grew up in the household. So I am like so familiar with the pressures and the, and the, you know, the problems and the decisions and the issues and the budgets that need to come out of, of that person's head while they're running this position. And and as I think about it, I think about it as as a, a good town manager for Arlington, I think, needs to be uh, like an orchestra leader. And mm -hmm. the and the orchestra leader has the audience that he's there to please. Specifically, though, he has a board of select. No, I can't get rid of that. The select board that right. he has to please because the, he or she does not work for the town specifically, unlike a mayor form of government. Uh, uh, the town manager works for and, and at, at, to make the, the uh, select board happy. So right. with that in mind, removing the select board's happiness, the town also has to be happy. And right. the town is like the audience in this right. orchestra right. hall. And right. and the department heads are the the uh, members of the orchestra. Right. If there's one thing that I would like for a town manager to be able to do is to make those those department heads work together as a team, make them feel like a team, be good at team building, make them understand what's going on and care about what each other is doing within their departments. 
and to be aware of the various needs and interests and policies that the audience thinks are going to come out, the town yeah. policies that that come out of uh, that are uh, that the townspeople are aware of, make sure that all of the uh, department heads are aware of those policies. Great. In Arlington, we have elected, we have boards that are elected, we have boards that are appointed, we have boards mm -hmm. that are appointed by the town, we have boards um, uh, that, as Robin referred to earlier, the, the arts groups that are in town mm -hmm. that are not necessarily, some have some appointments and some are just freestanding groups. We have a lot of we have dozens and dozens of groups that contribute tremendously to the quality of life of people in Arlington. And those groups, some of them have very formal mission statements and policies. Others have less formal goals and policies. The town manager needs to be aware of, of those goals and policies and needs to weave it in to the department heads in their daily and weekly and monthly goals so that they can reinforce those policies that come out from the audience. Okay. Thank you. And uh, where was your uh, uh, mother or father uh, city manager? Back in that day, it would have been the father. Yes, and, probably. Um, and, and he was... Uh, for, his, for about 20 years in Santa Ana and before that oh. in Bakersfield. All right, so you, you, know, you know the business, so. Oh very yeah. Good. Very good, thank you very much. Thank you. Elizabeth. Um, great, I, I wanted to just maybe ask you a couple questions about the process. Sure. So two people have asked if there is a selection committee and I'm wondering if you could answer that and say who is on it if there is, and if there isn't, what is the plan about that? And B, what is the transparency of this process? How will we as residents be able to follow along? Will there be um, publication of the statement of the position statement? You know, I'm curious to know what you're hearing from the department heads and from the select board about what they would like in a town manager. So how do we stay informed? Sure, sure. Uh, in terms of the, there's, there's, um, <clears throat> there's not a selection committee. And I think uh, that what will probably be talked about uh, at some point by the board is, a, um, is some type of uh, screening committee to help with the process. The, the board selects uh, the, the, the manager. Uh, so there's not a there's not a committee that selects the manager. That's the responsibility of the uh, the board, the select board. But there uh, is talk. We're working now on um, what type, what the screening process would look like, and how that works out. And so we'll, that that will be coming up though in subsequent conversations with the select board. In terms of the position profile, yes, it's, it will be a public document. We can it will be posted on our web page, and I would anticipate it will be posted on the town's web page. Uh, and it will provide all of that. Uh, you know, it, again, keep in mind it's going to be a tool to market the position, to give people information about the town, about the position, about the issues. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, and it's it's done in a format that uh, if you go to our, web, our website, communityparadigm.com, you can see what's out there right now and other positions that we're working on in other communities. We can, uh, you know. The, Someone mentioned the town of Water, the city of Watertown, which we just recently completed uh, in the last few months. Uh, we did the same process there, uh, but that will be um, that's out there. And it, it is very transparent. As far as the actual screening process, uh, the screening of the uh, candidates uh, will occur in executive session. Uh, that is not public. Uh, because people's jobs are at stake and we don't, we want to get the, you know, um, the most robust, diverse pool that we can. And so uh, people tend to, uh, to apply for positions unless there's some guarantee of confidentiality as they go through the process. But once the, the screening process results in the selection of finalists that are sent on to the board, those will be public. Those are public uh, uh, presented publicly, 
the candidates are out there publicly uh, and they will be interviewed publicly. Uh, so that's all a very public process. It's some some states, the laws allow for that to be take place outside uh, of um, public uh, the public, but in, in Massachusetts, it's required that that those finalists be considered publicly. Thank you. And when you are screening candidates, how do you how do you control for bias? Uh, you know, we've we've used a process in a couple of the communities uh, of a blind review. Um, it's more challenging in the uh, municipal sector or for a position of this sort um, because, you know, we can, we can delete names uh, of people. Um, you know, we can... Uh, try to take out any identifying information that tells people whether, you know, what the gender is, what the um, gender identity is, what the uh, ethnicity and race and age are. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, we're going to be looking, people are going to be looking at this individual works at this location. And, you know, if you started to take out the communities that they work in, and we've tried doing that, then you lose everything it's about the people's backgrounds. So we can, we've tried to take out some of that information, but it's, it's, uh, it's met with only limited success. The other, the other uh, aspect of that that's, that's, I would say, interesting, and maybe that's not the best word, is that many communities now um, with the emphasis and that it has been placed on building a more diverse um, pool are interested in seeing what, you know, who are the uh, people from underrepresented groups that have applied for the position. So we've had uh, committees that we've worked with that have said, you know, you know, it, it is a challenge getting people of color uh, to apply for these positions, getting women to apply for these positions. We just don't have, uh, the reality is that uh, we don't necessarily have as many people uh, from those groups that are, that are applying for these municipal positions in spite of all of our efforts because um, there's still just challenges out there. But in communities, there has been a, a, a push. Well, you know, let's make sure that we have women, and people of color that are in our pool that we're looking at. So that, of course, disappears when you make it a blind process. Um, so we try to weigh all of that as we go through it. But we have we have used it, but it's it don't, it hasn't necessarily met with um, um, as much satisfaction as some people were looking for. Thank you. Yeah. You know, it's it's not like you know. There's in the um, if we were a, a high tech company, just our, you know, we'll use that as an example, and we were looking for a software engineer, just a software engineer. You know, there's hundreds, thousands of software engineers out there you know, and you want to take away the, the, the name that would tell you the, the like, would likely tell you the gender or the ethnicity, then, you know, it really would matter because then you really could see it. But when you need to throw in where people are working, that's going to tell you, and everyone, it's all public. So it's all Googleable so that people can just do their own thing if they're on, if they're on the committee. So it's a hurdles that we've, tried to work through. Uh, Robin. I was just wondering what the time frame is. Do you know yet in terms of uh, the whole process? Our, our, yeah, our goal is to um, probably get this uh, out on the street um, at the beginning of December with the goal being that 
We would have uh, resumes in hand at the beginning of January, um, go through the screening process uh, and the interviews during February, uh, and have these in the hands of the select board by the um, beginning to middle of March, uh, with a hiring probably sometime in uh, early April. Okay, thanks. Sure. And that, in, in that way, usually these uh, positions, there's a about a 60 day notice period. So the hope would be that um, uh, the new town manager would be in place uh, probably sometime in June. Another question, comment. I just, can I just say, sure. um, yeah. I know I said this before and I think you probably noted it, but I think that if the town is really committed to um, having a diverse um, applicant pool, that they would do well to look beyond the normal recruiting places to looking for people with community organizing experience and nonprofit management experience. That's where you'll find the women and the people of color. Okay. Yeah, and, it, and again, I think that what, what communities have, have found is, and, and I certainly uh, support that and support the, you know, we're very proud of the fact that uh, we have had, uh, through our searches, the 90 or so that we've done, uh, women have been uh, in the finalist pool in, I believe, about 70% of our searches have resulted in women in the finalist pool and selected in um, 35 to 40%. Um, I haven't run those numbers recently, um, both of which exceed the state average. Um, and we have had an opportunity to um, have a number of candidates that are people of color that have been uh, interviewed and or uh, appointed. Uh, so we're very, we're very proud of all of that. And the balance really is uh, the diversity of the pool and uh, making sure that the people that are uh, in the pool are, are truly interested in the position and uh, are appropriate for the position. Uh, and, you know, it's it's really weighing all of that that, that we're able to focus on. But uh, yeah, we couldn't uh, agree more on the importance of the, um, the diversity of the pool. Something we take very seriously. Good, thank you. Other comments that people may have? I think we blocked off about an hour and a half of this tonight and running up against that, but we're here to hear from you. So I want to make sure we have we get everything that we, we possibly can. And we can go a little later since we started about 10 minutes sure. later. Late, so. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Lynn, I think we're Though I think we're, we're probably, everyone's had an opportunity now, I think to, to weigh in and or has said what they need to say. But again, if there's something we're missing here. Um, no, we, we did leave this wide open just so that people could speak about whatever they wanted and ask any questions, mm -hmm. make any comments. And, uh, so yeah. hey, there'll be other opportunities. And, uh, so whether uh, Mr. Lynch is here or yeah. not, maybe we will hold in. Um, other forums and, and we'll reach out to the community and certainly if anyone has any ideas you know more suggestions as to me who to reach and where to reach them um, I'm all ears me um, my colleague is all ears and so we will do as much as we can you know and and in and any and in any format and, and and provide that to Bernie if it's appropriate and certainly to all colleagues when, when appropriate also yeah, yeah. yeah and, and i think i think people here in, in attendance and people that may be watching this on uh local uh, the local cable government access cable uh you know they know how to get a hold of the board members uh and i'll put my email out there it's b lynch at community .com. uh if people have uh, additional information that they want to send on to me 
Uh, you know, our goal is to get this out on the street in December, but the selection won't take place until much later. Uh, so at any point between now and December, uh, and then beyond that, if people have questions or um, if feedback that they want to give to the board members or to me, uh, happy to take it. And really, I, I was tr trying to emphasize too. I mean, it is only doing uh, the creation of the position statement of the profile that we want input made. Uh, we will take input right up until the time that we make the decision. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. yep, exactly. Elizabeth. Um. So, will there be other? What What is the What is the um, game plan for? further outreach beyond to the community beyond tonight is there other listening I think, sessions I think what, what, generally generally what uh and again following the model that uh that we've used in other communities the um the uh you know we we were always able to, willing willing and able to take feedback uh and information uh throughout the process uh, it, but we use the forum we use the survey uh and then generally there's some type of process or some type of citizen engagement or community engagement uh towards the end of the process as we're looking at the finalists to give people an opportunity to meet people but we have to we need to talk that over with the board as we get in towards that end <clears throat> Yeah, I just think you're going to get different input than you, than you are from this group about what people in town need from a town manager. And I just think that there's a missed opportunity to hear from different people and uh, rather than the same people. So I'm just going to put that out there. Okay, thank you. It certainly will. We'll, we'll, we'll explore some other opportunities that may be possible out there. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I think we're going to bring this to an end. You know, me and I'll circle back to my colleague Steve if he wants to say anything or comment. Thank you. Now, I just want to thank everybody again. And, and as I was listening to the comments tonight, these comments are going to be helpful to us, to our colleagues, but all, also to people who ultimately will apply for the job, because I'm sure they, as part of their due diligence for the town, they will take a look at um, meetings as, as well as this forum tonight. So thank you for the participation. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. You know, so... I'm going to end the recording now. And Thank you. Wish you a good night. Great. Thank you, everybody. Good Thank night. You. Thank you.